Okay, so we've been talking about um, solving proportional problems, like, you know, so, so word problems that have a ratio in them, and the importance of setting up a little chart for yourself so that you can keep everything organized. Um, but sometimes you might encounter what, what we kind of call a two-step proportional problem. Um, so it's where like a ratio relates to part of an amount, um, it relates part of the amount to a whole amount, or sometimes they relate part of the amount to just another part of the amount. Um, and we have to figure out what the whole amount is. So let's do some um, examples of, of that, just so you can kind of see what those little charts look like. So here we have a question. So the ratio of male to female students in the class last summer was two to five. There were 42 students in the class. How many were male? Okay, so let me write out first my ratio, right? So I have my ratio and my new amount. And what, they're, what, they're, what they give me are male students to female students, right? They tell me that for every two male students, there was five female students. But then they, they, they kind of give me this third piece of information, like a total, right? They said there were 42 students total in class. Well, so that's... That's weird. I don't have that information. I don't have a number for right here. So let me show you how we get this number um, to fill in this spot. And it's really very simple because if you think about it, two and five, if I add those together, those make up the whole amount. So what is two plus five? Seven. There it is. So I could say that there were two male students for every seven students in class. I could say there were five female students for every seven students in class. And that, that makes sense, right? Because out of if I had five female students out of seven, well, what are the other two remaining students going to be? Well, they're going to be male, right? Um, so what does the question ask me, though? Let's look at that again. How, so they tell me the total number of students in the class, and then they say how many were male last summer, right? So that means they're asking me this. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, how do we solve that? That makes no sense. Here is how we're going to solve it. We're going to, like, scribble this one out. We only needed that information to find this new ratio, right? So now my new ratio is 2 to 7. And I'm simply going to solve like every other ratio problem that we've been solving. I'm going to multiply these two together, and I'm going to divide by whatever whatever's left. So let's do that. It's going to be 42 times 2, which is 84, right? And then I'm going to divide by 7. Goes once. Got one left over, drop my four down. 17 to 14 goes twice. Okay, so if I have a ratio of two male students to a total of seven in the class, then my total male students out of the 42 is going to be 12. There'll be 12 guys out of a, in a class of 42. Let's look at another example. Just because I know that this is kind of a weird, a weird thing to think about. And this one, I'm going to throw in a little bit of that like-unlike thing. Um, so a 12-ounce can of frozen concentrated juice is mixed with three 12-ounce cans of water to make 48 ounces of juice. How many ounces of concentrate will we need to make a gallon of juice? Holy buckets. Okay, well, what have they just told me? Because um, I got to make my little chart here, right? To keep myself organized and to keep from getting confused. I'm going to have my new amount. I'm going to have the ratio that they tell me about. And it looks like I'm comparing concentrate, right, to water. Do you guys all know what, what concentrated orange juice is? It's in the freezer section. Um, and it's like, sometimes it's a good deal to buy orange juice and it's just um, lots of orange juice flavor and you mix it with water and it's like just as good as the original orange juice you buy out of the, out of the jug. So anyway, that's what that is. So we, we're comparing that concentrated formula to the amount of water that we put in, right? Okay, and what do they tell me? There's one can 
of frozen concentrated juice with mixed, so one can of concentrate, this is a C, mixed with three, right? Can you see that? Three 12 ounce cans of water. And that's going to make 48 ounces of juice, right? Hmm, okay. So this is good, this is good information to know. I actually think that that 48 ounces is unnecessary. Um, this is another one where I'm going to need that total column though too, right? Because when I fill in, um, when, I, when I read my question again, let me grab it here, um, the, what they're really asking is how many ounces of concentrate will we need to make a gallon of juice? So this is that thing that I was saying, like, if this is an example of another like ratio. I got to make sure that all my stuff is in the same format. It's all in the same common common um, measurement amount. So if I have ounces up here, I can't just switch to gallons. I have to convert this gallons to ounces, and that is 128. So the 128 ounces, I'm going to end up writing it somewhere down here. And that what they're really saying is they want it to be the total, right? Um, they, they want it to be my total amount. So just like in the last example that we looked at, I, I don't have a ratio to the total. I only have a ratio to each other. But if I have um, one concentrate and three water, my total is actually going to be like four 12-ounce cans. So I can just, you know, add those two together. And what I've created here is a ratio of concentrate to the total and of water to the total. So if I have three cans of water for every four cans of liquid put into the mix, um, then that obviously, hopefully obviously, you would think, oh, there's only one that's different and that's gonna be the concentrate. So now let's go back to the question again. So I've got, I, I've got that in the right place. Now I need to know what it is they're asking me. How many ounces of concentrate will we need to make a gallon? So my concentrate spot is right here. So I know that this is the spot that I need to fill. Um, and so that also tells me that this is the spot that I need to ignore. And so then my ratio will be one to four. Um, versus something to 128, and how do I, how do I solve that? Just like before, I'm going to multiply the ones that are diagonal and divide by whatever's left. Okay, 128 times one—that's pretty easy. That's just 128, right? But now I got to divide it by four. Four into 128. Okay, it's going to go three times into 12. 0, drop the 8 down, 4 into 8 goes twice, which is 8, and I'm going to have 0 left over. So that means I'm going to need 32, 32 cans, or 32 ounces, right, because this was 1 ounce to 4, then that was ounces, 32 ounces to make 128 ounces of concentrate.